Hello, and welcome to another day in the car. On November 17th, 2021, we got the news that we had both been waiting for and dreading in the Cassidy Rainwater case. My name is Jules, and I want to start this video off by offering my sincere condolences to Cassidy's family and friends. May she rest in peace. DNA tests have confirmed that her remains were recovered from the Dallas County, Missouri property that was rented by James Phelps. He and Timothy Norton have now been charged with first-degree murder, along with additional charges. They were both already in jail on charges of kidnapping and menacing Cassidy. Now, before we get into it, I feel the need to issue a trigger warning the information I am about to reveal is horrifying, and it's not for the squeamish. I'm going to share this information in order to expose James Phelps and Timothy Norton as the monsters that they are. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, Sheriff Scott Rice shared an update on Facebook, which takes us through the complete timeline and the details of what Cassidy went through. I'm reading that statement now. On August 25th, 2021, we received a missing person report on Cassidy Rainwater. While talking with the reporting party, Cora Terry, it was revealed the last time Cassidy had been seen was approximately six weeks ago prior to the missing person's report. Terry advised the last person she believed to have seen Cassidy was James Rainwater. We later learned James Rainwater was in fact James Phelps, who lived at 386 Moon Valley Road, Lebanon, Missouri. On the same day, August 25th, 2021, after taking the missing person report, deputies drove to 386 Moon Valley Road to follow up on the missing person report. After arriving at 386 Moon Valley Road, deputies met James Phelps. Deputies asked Phelps if he knew Cassidy Rainwater. Phelps advised he did, but he had not spoken to her in about a month. Phelps advised Cassidy had made a statement about going to Colorado. On September 1, 2021, a Dallas County detective drove to 386 Moon Valley Road, where he spoke with James Phelps concerning the missing person case of Cassidy Rainwater. Phelps told the detective that Cassidy had been staying with him until she got back on her feet, and she had been there for a couple of weeks. Phelps repeated to the detective that Cassidy had been talking about going to Colorado. Phelps stated that about a month prior, Cassidy had met a vehicle at the end of the driveway and left in the middle of the night. Phelps stated that he had not seen Cassidy since. On September 16, 2021, the FBI contacted Dallas County detectives and provided a series of photographs. The FBI had received the photographs as a cyber tip that was titled Cassidy by the person who sent them. The photos depicted a partially clothed female in a cage who we recognized as Cassidy. The other photos depicted Cassidy's body bound to a gantry crane commonly used for deer processing and her evisceration and dismemberment. On this same day, September 16, 2021, Dallas County detectives responded to 386 Moon Valley Road. Upon arriving, detectives recognized items in Phelps' backyard that coincided with the photos. Detectives placed Phelps under arrest and had him transported to the Dallas County Jail while he remained on scene, keeping the scene secure until a search warrant was obtained. The search warrant was obtained through Dallas County Prosecutor Jonathan Barker and signed by the Honorable Judge Lisa Henderson. The search warrant was executed by Dallas County Sheriff's Office with the assistance of Greene County Sheriff's Office Crime Scene Unit and the FBI. For the next seven days, investigators processed the entire crime scene. Collected during this time was physical evidence including the gantry device, cage, and items from the freezer that appeared to be human flesh with a date written on them of July 24th. Skeletal remains believed to be Cassidy were located on the adjacent property. Also recovered from the scene was digital evidence from electronic devices. 
In total, over 200 pieces of evidence were recovered. The remains found in the freezer were confirmed by the crime lab to be Cassidy Rainwater. Digital evidence revealed messages between James Phelps and Timothy Norton planning the murder of Cassidy Rainwater. On September 17, 2021, Dallas County Deputy and an FBI agent interviewed James Phelps. Phelps invoked his right to an attorney. On September 20th, 2021, Timothy Norton was interviewed by FBI agents. Norton confessed to the murder of Cassidy Rainwater. Norton told FBI agents that Phelps had him come over while Cassidy was sleeping in the living room floor, so he had easy access to attack Cassidy. Norton stated, after entering the house, he held Cassidy's legs down while Phelps strangled her and placed a bag over her head. Norton stated that after Cassidy was deceased, he and Phelps took a short break before carrying her body outside. Norton stated that Phelps bound her to the gantry crane and Phelps began evisceration and dismemberment of Cassidy's body. Norton stated he helped Phelps carry Cassidy's body into the house and placed her into the bathtub. We have not located any evidence that would lead us to believe there are any other victims associated with Phelps and Norton at this time. This is still an ongoing investigation. If there is anyone who believes they may have information concerning this case, they can call investigators at the Dallas County Sheriff's Office. End of quote. I have had that number running as a banner throughout the video, and it will also be listed in the description. If you have any information regarding whether James Phelps or Timothy Norton may have been involved in the disappearance of any other people, or if you have more information about what they did to Cassidy or why, please call it in. The sheriff has made previous comments stating that everyone involved in what happened to Cassidy is in custody. I sure hope this is true, but I feel there may be more involved. On October 4th, the cabin that Phelps and Norton were staying in with Cassidy burned to the ground. Luckily, evidence had already been gathered. Law enforcement had access to the property for at least seven days and removed over 200 items of evidence before the fire started. The fire has been ruled an arson. There were tripwire devices found, and arson investigators determined that a similar device was responsible for setting the blaze. I'm quite curious about how this could have occurred after law enforcement thoroughly searched the property and removed the evidence. They had possession of that property for seven days, but the tripwire devices were not found until the fire. Were they planted after Phelps and Norton were already in custody? Who would have set that fire and why? This whole case was solved due to the tip sent to the FBI. Who sent the photos of Cassidy and where did they get them? Was it James Phelps, Timothy Norton, or someone else with knowledge of Cassidy's demise? I certainly hope that they have everyone involved in the horrors Cassidy endured. I can only hope that the fire was the work of people who cared about Cassidy and wanted that house of horrors gone and the land purified. I'd hate to think that this was the work of an accomplice. I also sincerely hope that these two men were not involved in any of the other missing person cases in Missouri, like Echo Lloyd, Dave Koenig, and Mark Fullerton. I will be covering their stories soon. Please, if you heard something, or if you know something, alert the authorities. Bring answers to the families of the missing. As always, I look forward to talking to you in the comments section. Thank you for watching Another Day in the Car with Jules. I'll see you in the next video.